You're welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P2 paper from the Edexcel International A-Level exam. This question here is about this proof kind of question. It says, in this question, you must show detailed reasoning in bold type here. So it says, given that X and Y are positive numbers, X and Y are positive numbers, such that X minus Y cubed is greater than X cubed minus Y cubed, Prove that y is greater than x. So the first thing we need to do is we need to, of course, note that x and y are both positive. So they're both greater than 0. Okay, that's the first thing we need to know. Secondly, we need to expand this x minus y cubed. So x minus y cubed, we can expand this in two ways. Okay, so I'll show you both ways of expanding it. One way would be like um, do x minus y times x minus y squared. Okay, so we know that x minus y squared, if you square this bracket, you square the first term, you multiply these together and you double it, so you get negative 2xy, and then you square the last term, that gives you positive y squared. And then you expand this, so you have x times x cubed, which is x, x times x squared, which is x cubed, x times minus 2xy, which is minus 2x squared y, and x times y squared which is plus x y squared and then minus y times x squared is minus x squared y and minus y times two minus two x y is minus two x y squared and minus y times plus y squared is minus y cubed this is always important to try to write things in alphabetical order so it's easy for you now to recognize like terms so now you got x cubed you got minus two x squared y and minus another 1x squared y, that's minus 3x squared y. You got x squared y, and you've got, um, that's supposed to be plus 2x squared y. 2xy squared plus 2xy squared. That's supposed to be a plus. I made a mistake there. So you've got to be careful. Minus y times minus 2xy is plus 2xy squared. Okay, it's a good thing. I knew that it's supposed to be a 3 there which we'll, I'll show you from the um, binomial expansion. So we've, we've done with those two, like, those two like terms, these two like terms, we've got minus y cubed left, and there's the expansion. Okay. Alternatively, we could use what we know from binomial expansion, and for the expansion of something cubed, even your understanding, the basic understanding of, of the Pascal's triangle and NCR, you should be able to understand that when you, when you expand this, you're going to have your main coefficients of 1, 3, 3, 1. If you want to show you do NC, NC0, NC3, uh, uh, 3C0, 3C1, 3C2, 3C3. Okay, those will be your, coefficients, your main coefficients. And if you want to start off with the X as the highest power, then we'll do X cubed. And you have minus Y to the power of 0. Okay, and then you're going to have plus. This will be X squared and you have minus y to the power of one you have plus this would be x to the power of one and you'll have minus y squared and you have plus x to the power of zero and minus y cubed so the first bracket the power is going down each time the second bracket the power is increasing each time and you put the terms in okay including the sign so this is going to give you um x cubed so you're going to have this is going to be x cubed and here you're going to have um, minus y, so that's going to be negative 3x squared. So minus 3x squared y. And here you're going to have plus, and that's going to also become positive, because when you square negative, it becomes positive. So you have plus 3xy squared. And here you're going to have, this becomes 1. So you have minus y all cubed, that's it's a negative power, negative number raised to an odd power, so it becomes minus y cubed. So we get the same answer here as there. And whichever way you prefer to do it, that's fine. So you expand the bracket first. And then we're going to continue on with this inequality as it is. So we have x minus y cubed is greater than x cubed minus y cubed. Okay, now we'll just write it out with the expansion that we found. So you've got x cubed minus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared minus y cubed is greater than x cubed minus y cubed. Now, if we bring everything on one side of the equation, you'll have x cubed minus x cubed, which is 0. 
and you'll have minus y cubed plus y cubed, which is zero. So you're left with a zero on this side. So you're left here with minus 3x squared y plus 3x y squared is greater than zero. And if we take out the common factor, in fact, if we divide both sides by um, three, okay, dividing by three is fine. Why? Because it's a positive number. When you have an inequality, you have to be careful. If you divide both sides by a positive number, okay, then you will have um, no problem. If you divide by a negative number, you have to change the sign. So I'm dividing by three, in which case this case becomes x minus x squared y plus x y squared is greater than zero. I'm going to take out a common factor here of x y. If I take out x y as a common factor, okay, because x y is common to both of those, this becomes x, and this becomes um, this becomes minus x, sorry, and this becomes plus y is greater than zero. So now, in this case here, we have to do, this is where we do the reasoning bit. Okay, so we know that x and y are greater than zero. Therefore, x, y is also greater than zero. Okay, if x and y are both greater than zero, that means x times y is greater than zero. So this is positive. For sure, this is positive. If x and y are both positive, this is positive, okay? Which means that this, if this is greater than zero, therefore we say minus x plus y must also be positive. Because if you have a positive times a negative, it won't be greater than zero. It will only be greater than zero if you have positive times positive. They'll both be positive, you'll get a positive answer. And we know for sure that this is positive, right? So if x, if minus x plus y is greater than zero, therefore we know that y is greater than x, which is what we had to prove. Okay, that's what we had to prove, y is greater than x. Okay, so as long as x and y are both greater than zero, then this is a true statement. Okay, so we prove that it's true. And the reason we have to say here, we have to mention is this. So we should, if you want to put it in words, it's probably better. As x and y are both positive, then x times y is also positive, okay? Which means that minus x plus y must also be positive. And then you can go on, that's fine, all right? And over here, um, yes, yeah, so that's basically, uh, we could do it another way at this stage as well. At this stage, for example, we could have divided by x, y, all right? Normally we don't, we say don't divide by a, um, a variable so that you don't lose any solutions. But in this case, we just wanna prove this part here anyway. So if you divide it by x, y, you're dividing an inequality by a positive term, okay, a positive value. So you haven't changed its value, so you can continue. This is probably a better way of doing it. Okay, so now, because when you divide it by x, y, you'll be left with just this, and then you can show that, right? But I think this is a better way of doing it, just to keep the same principle that we try to follow. Don't divide by a variable, unless you, otherwise you'll lose solutions. But, you know, in this case, it doesn't really matter that much because we want to prove this, which is what we've got left with. Okay, now for part B, it says using a counter example. A counter example. Okay, so we have to use what's called a counter example. Show that the result in part A is not true for all real numbers. Okay, so a counter example. So now we have to change this slightly. Um, given that X and Y are real numbers real numbers so they could be any real number including positive or negative before we're only concerned with positive numbers okay so they're both real numbers okay um then we got to prove that this is wrong so if this if x minus y cubed is greater than x cubed minus y cubed then y must be greater than x all right now what we can see from what we have proven in the previous uh, part of the question is that basically if x and y are both positive, okay, then this is going to be positive, x times y is going to be positive, and therefore this must also be positive, which leads us to the conclusion that y is greater than x, okay, y has to be greater than x for this to be positive, okay, now, if, however, one of the x and y was positive, if there were different signs, then what's going to happen is, that will be negative, and then this would have to be negative. And if this has to be negative, if minus x plus y has to be negative, then y has to be less than x, which will cause this statement to be false. 
Okay, because then and then y would have to be less than x, not greater than x. So if x and y are of different signs, okay, then this breaks down because of this part becomes negative. So that's how we can figure out how to find a counterexample. A counterexample is choose one example that shows this result is not true. So you have to choose one practical example. Like you choose value of x and y that makes that true. So first of all, I'm going to choose a value of x and y, which are opposite signs, in which case I'm going to choose where y is less than x. So for example, I'll say let x equals 1 and let y equals negative 1. So they're both real numbers. x and y are both elements of the real numbers. Okay. All right, as the condition is here. But now we're going to show that this will cause, okay, this could cause this to, tr this to be true, but then this will not be true. Because we can see straight away here that here y is not greater than x. All right. So basically, um, let's just put these values into here. So we've got your left hand side and you've got your right hand side of your inequality. So you have x minus y cubed and here you have x cubed minus y cubed. So x is 1 and y is minus 1. So 1 minus minus 1 and that has to be cubed. And here we're going to have uh, x cubed 1 cubed minus and this is minus 1 cubed. So this gives you minus 1 minus 1 which is 2 so that's 2 cubed. And here you're going to have uh, 1, you're going to have 1 minus minus 1. 1 cubed is 1, and minus 1 cubed is minus 1. So here you have 8, and here you have 2. 8 is greater than true. Okay, so we can see here that when x equals 1, and y equals minus 1, we see that x minus y cubed is greater than x cubed minus y cubed. However, however, in this case, y is less than x. Okay, which... Okay, basically, um, you know, proves, okay, proves the above statement, the above statement to be false. To be false. Okay, it proves it to be false. Okay, um, basically, because of this reason, why is it less than x? Okay, so we so we we found that you know choosing x equals one and y equals negative one, okay, proves prove the statement to be false. Something like this is fine. This is a counter example. A counter example is just one example which shows the statement to be false. So there's the answer to part B of this question. So I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear on the top of the screen at the end of this video. Other questions from the topic of proofs can be found in the playlist down here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the video here will show you how to use my channel to find those things that you might be, um, you know, wanting to see and you can find them easily then on my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.